Keys video. Um, well, it's actually going to be um, my first vlog, I guess they call it, like video blog. Um, I'm going to be discussing like downswings and how to handle that as a recreational player and as a pro. Uh, I do think there's different ways that it should and can be handled, uh, whether you're one or the other. Um, but I think as far as uh, like topics of like downswings or like concepts of it that work for both a pro and recreational player, I'll, I'll go over a few points for that. The biggest thing is sample size. If you like my one buddy plays like once or twice a month and he claims that he's like running bad all the time or like he just can't get hands to hold up and you really need often like like 5,000 to 10,000 hands uh, to like really know if you're a winning player or not. So I think sample size is important. Um, like if you play once or twice a month, it's going to be really hard to know if you're just running bad. Um, because like there's so much variance in, in the short term in poker like when you take lines or actions you should be making them they're like long-term decisions basically um, like you're making positive expected value plays based on long-term outcomes now like you see your results in the short term but <laughs> sorry I feel like my face or my hand was in front of my face there but I'll, I think I'll get a pass for this being my first video but um yeah, like there's so much variance in the short term, so it's going to be hard to really justify like if you're running bad or, or well or whatnot. But sample size is important. Um, I think something else that I would say probably 10 out of 10, maybe like 9 out of 10 players, uh, they don't realize that they're often just playing poorly too. To be, it, It's a hard truth, but to be totally honest, I think like even when I've had my downswings, I think for the most part, like as a, like I feel like I'm a very good, uh, player as far as like a pro goes but I think that um, like just to be honest about it when I've had my downswings I've found spots where I'm like oh I feel like I might actually be not playing as optimal in the spot or like making my frequencies are a little bit off as far as like am I betting enough in this spot on the turn or am I uh, over like am I over calling too much in this spot in the river am I folding too much in this spot there's, I feel like every downswing I've ever had, there's been a, like at least one thing where I'm like, wow, this is actually like a little bit of a leak. Um, and it could be like a bigger leak. It, it's usually not as much these days. Um, but um, I think the point is players just blame the deck or other players in the hand. Like it's if they are losing, it's not their fault. But if they're winning, it's because they took the right line or something. And it's often... A lot of times players could be running white hot and running really well for like two months when they're playing like super poorly. I've seen this. I see this happen all the time. Um, so, yeah, I think that make sure you are checking yourself to make sure like you're taking the right lines or that you're being honest with yourself about your game. And because uh, a lot of your downswing could be you just playing like really not optimal poker. Um, and it might be something. Like, like I said, maybe one small leak, or it could be like five big leaks. So I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, the last thing, which a lot of players will probably be, like, if I said this to some people, I think they might get pissed. But it, when I say it's part of the game, uh, it, that's truly what it is. Like, if you're in a downswing um, and these things are happening to you, that's part of the game. Like, it's a, a game based on math and, and probabilities, basically. Um, like let's say you have the prototypical like aces versus kings pre-flop and you and your buddy do it you know let's say you get it in all in pre-flop 100 times and you have aces all 100 times you mathematically are going to lose probably about 20 of those hands and losing 20 times with with aces uh like losing 20 pots out of 100 could seem like a lot like you're like I'm not really supposed to lose with that hand that often but that's how the math often works out like in no limit hold'em you're often getting it in as a four to one favored like that's a dominating like that's when you're most likely like dominating your opponent is like a four to one favor uh give or take but you're still gonna lose 20 percent of the time so that's something that's part of the game and you really should just be happy that you got it in that good like I mean these days to be honest like when I lose 
going into the river is like a 95% favorite. Um, I'm usually pretty pumped that I got the money in that well. And, and that most of the time I'll be making so much money off that play. And, and, uh, the other players just, you know, got really lucky, but will often be losing so much money there. So I think that's something that, I mean, it's so cliche to say, like, it's part of the game, I guess, but it truly is. And so you should really keep that in mind. Um, now, as far as dealing with downswings, I guess as far as like being a pro or recreational player, I do think there's a couple of different ways to handle it both ways. Like if you're a recreational player and you play, let's say you do get in somehow like Monday through Friday, um, and let's say Monday's going really poorly, Tuesday session goes really poorly, Wednesday you're having a rough session, why not just cut Wednesday short and come back on Monday? You don't have to come in Thursday or Friday. Like if you're not playing for um, any, like if you're not playing for primary or supplemental income, then what's the point of not enjoying the game and dealing with like the run bad or playing poorly, which you're most likely probably not playing optimally. Like I said, I think that for recreational players, especially it's supposed to be fun. Like you're in there playing poker because it's a passion of yours and you're in there to have fun. And especially if you're, if it's live setting, you're in there to socialize as well. And it's like, it is like a social club for a lot of people. So those people, maybe this video doesn't uh, apply to them as much. Cause I don't think they care as much about their wins or losses, but obviously I think for everybody winning is <laughs> more fun than losing. But uh, I just think the point is, is that as like a recreational player, you don't have to sit through it. You can go enjoy other hobbies or spend time with your family um, if you have one or whatever. But um, I just think that, yeah, like you should be having fun and having positive thoughts when you're playing. And if you don't want to sit there and have to deal with how the session's going or or not finish the week out or finish your weekend out, if you just play on the weekend, then you can go do something else. And I think that's... I mean, it sounds like such a ridiculously simple concept or piece of advice that I'm giving, but I mean, I think if it was that simple, then more people would, I don't know, I guess exercise that. So uh, that's as far as that goes. Being a pro, it's a little bit different. Um, I would say when you go through like your first legit downswing or a downswing at any point, if you play for primary or supplemental income, uh, I would suggest definitely playing through it. And obviously I'm not gonna go into bankroll like you guys that play for money know that's like the number one most important thing. But um, if you're rolled, you don't have to worry about like losing money again the next session if you're playing through a downswing or you don't have to worry about if you want to be able to take a break, which I'll get into next. But if you're a pro, um, I would definitely suggest trying to play through some downswings because you will, excuse me guys, um, I mean, it'll mentally benefit you so much for the next downswing that you go through. Like you, it will help you become a better player. Like it'll help you become much more mentally tough. You'll find that you can play poker for longer, even if you are struggling through a session or through multiple sessions or through a month. Um, but you'll find spots where you can definitely uh, improve and like possibly plug some leaks. And so I, I do think it's really beneficial to players that do take the game seriously or play for uh, some kind of income to try to play through those downswings. Now, if it gets to the point where it's like running on a month or longer, I would seriously uh, consider taking an extended break, whether for you that's two to three days and you play just like maybe Monday, Tuesday, one week, and then you take Wednesday through, you know, Sunday off and have like a long weekend. Or if you seriously need like a week to two weeks, I've heard of some players taking months off. If you have the bankroll to do that, that's um, great. But um, I just think that being able to take some time off if you need it to kind of get that mental focus back and like positive thoughts, like not feeling like you're going to go in and get sucked out on every day. Um, I think that's really important for professional players. So yeah, basically, I guess to sum that up is play through the downswings if you can. It will really mentally... Um, strengthen you and help you be prepared for the next downswing uh, much better than you were for the last one possibly and if you do need a break then take a break there's nothing wrong with that in in this line of business where you have to be mentally 100 percent committed to, to every in my opinion every spot in every hand um 
you know, you need to be thinking positively and, and clearly, and you need to be you need to be able to play on uh, an optimal level as often as possible. Like I always stress that in my videos or articles that you we're never going to take the best line um, every time we play. Like if you're like, whenever I hear like a pro say something like, well, I, I didn't, I don't think I made any mistakes that session. Everybody makes at least some kind of mistake every session because nobody plays perfect poker. I, there's never been a session I've played where I'm like, Oh, I took the right line every single time that session. It never happens. Like um, that's why the game's so great, especially no limit. as far as like, PLO goes, which is, uh, I think the best game, but, and that's a whole different animal when it comes to like variance and dealing with downswing. But, uh, just as far as like poker general, like in general goes, um, I think that it just is important to be able to take the breaks when you need to and play through it. If you have to as a pro or somebody that needs income, but like I said, if you're a recreational player, you shouldn't have to to do that i wouldn't suggest doing that there's no reason to poker's supposed to be fun and um i think it's important to just play when you're ready to have some fun and and um and you know not care about the results like that like somebody that's playing for an income uh has to so uh that's gonna do it for this first vlog i hope it was uh valuable and i guess entertaining for you guys if you have any uh suggestions for future topics or any comments about something I can do different in this, um, then yeah, shoot them my way. Um, let me look on this paper here. I got, these were all my talking points on here. Um, I think I covered everything, but yeah. So I think that's gonna do it. Um, so this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care. Go Bucks.